Blood Hunt, a comic book run that's been pushed and marketed a lot by Marvel Comics within the last couple months and has a lot of people buzzing and chirping about what this run has to offer. A lot of people like myself are excited to see what it has in store because it's gonna be involving a lot of characters that we love. First and foremost, that being Blade the Vampire Hunter. Now, is this a good story? What does it have to offer? Well, I'm gonna break this down for you guys and get into it. Let's do it. You're now watching The Captain. The story kicks off in a very hectic situation in which the Scarlet Witch and Iron Man are having a conversation, letting each other know how all the different dark ability users within the world are exploding essentially and turning into portals into the dark dimension. And as their portals are opening up, all this dark force energy is coming through and essentially forming a bubble around the earth, blocking out all sun and moonlight. Obviously, this isn't really good. Uh, so they're trying to scramble to figure out what's going on and Iron Man then makes a little bit of a sarcastic remark to Wanda as he does Asking her hey, can you use your chaos magic to just make this problem go away? And she then responds very hilariously sure right after that I'll make sure I go beat up Galactus with my bare hands because it's just that easy um, And the thing I take away from this little bit of conversation is showing how dire the situation is and how difficult this is going to be to get rid of just for the factor of somebody like Scarlet Witch who through chaos magic and her just being very strong historically within Marvel Comics and just having a lot of knowledge on sorcery in general, not being able to make this problem just go away and it's beyond her. And I think that just shows you just how of a messed up situation that everybody's in at this current moment. Right after that, you're followed by the perspective of different heroes, Tiger and Moon Knight being two of them, and the rest of the current Avengers lineup, which consists of Vision, Ms. Marvel, Thor, Black Panther right now. And they're all being attacked and ambushed by hordes of vampires that are just popping up and attacking these densely populated areas and cities around the world. As the Avengers are fighting them back, they're trying to have a communication and brainstorm about who is potentially behind all this hell going on. And you're seeing them come up with theories like Dracula, who at this point in time, it doesn't really make sense for him to be behind all this, at least in the hero's minds with the factor of at some other comic run before this, uh, Dracula had created a vampire safe haven or a vampire uh, country, very akin to like Krakoa from the mutants. Like the vampires have their own place in the Ukraine where they are safe and kind of live in harmony. And I think they're sheriff by Blade. I think he's like the sheriff of the whole city. So Blade and Dracula can pretty much uh, run the city and make sure all the vampires stay in check and they stay over there in their little place. So after Dracula's kind of removed from the equation of potential masterminds behind all this going on, because obviously vampires are popping up and all sunlight being sniffed out has to be connected somehow. As they continue the fight, they then get a communication in from Blade who myself and a lot of people were kind of waiting on i'm like all right all this stuff's going on when are we going to get introduced in the blade because he has to be the one taking the lead on all this stuff he then lets everybody know that he pretty much knows who's behind all this and what's going on and instructs them to to convene upon the avengers headquarters so as everybody's teleporting in and they teleport blade in uh blade isn't the one that hops out of the truck that they got teleported in it is a group of what seems to be a vampire hit squad um, and the very big guy in the back, and you'll see him here, I'll drop an image of him, Bloodstorm 1, he essentially is letting everybody know, hey, we came here for two things, to chew gum and kick ass, and we all out of bubble gum. He immediately kind of names off the list of different vampires within his hit squad and assigns them to do different tasks and forms an attack plan, essentially, against the Avengers. Um, and as soon as he gets done assigning roles, they are in action. And the first thing that happens here is that all the different heroes are discombobulated from one of these vampires having some form of significant telepathic ability in which she's essentially creating like static and pain in everybody's brains. So as they're trying to fight off that static and, and, and focus, they are also being blitzed by the other vampires who've been assigned to fight each one of them. So right here is why I want to take a second to kind of like let you guys know just how messed up of a situation this is because this really reminded me of a scene from invincible season one if you guys have seen it you guys know what's probably about to allude to 
uh, where Homelander gets all the Guardians of the Globe together in one spot in the headquarters and just starts demolishing them. This is very similar to that because when I tell you that these Avengers were getting like washed and were surprised they were getting washed, they it, it was crazy. Uh, Thor is getting cut and he was just so surprised that something was able to cut him because he's Asgardian, he's a god. He's not used to really taking too much damage at all. Um, and they're letting him know that all these different vampires have some sort of ability to like eat a particular thing, whether it be pain, magic or whatever else. I'm not quite sure 100% how their abilities work. I probably have to read through this issue a couple more times to get a really good grasp on it. But essentially, they all eat something, maybe either physical or or abstract, I guess, for lack of a better term. And as they're eating all these uh, things, it's making these Avengers weak in what they're doing, essentially. Characters like Miss Marvel are struggling. Wanda is getting washed out by her matchup as well. Um, and the thing that also is very important that is said by Bloodstorm 1 is that they don't have any plans on killing the Avengers because it would be a waste of their bodies and their talents. So he essentially is letting everybody know they're all getting turned into vampires and that's their plan. Like we turn everybody in here and you're gonna be a part of our squad. And the most important thing that is showed about this plan is that Bloodstone One has this keen obsession with uh, with Captain America or slash Falcon because this is Captain Falcon at this point of Marvel Comics. He's the Captain America at, at this moment in time. And he essentially lets them know that, yeah, you're very important because you are a beacon of hope. Um, if for anybody that's not familiar with Captain America as a character in the comics historically, kind of similar to the MCU, he is shown to be a beacon of light and, and leadership that leads people in out of darkness and into better situations around not just the world, but sometimes in the comics around the, around the galaxy. Um, and that being the case, a big motivation for Bloodstorm 1 is to turn Captain Falcon into a vampire and pretty much make him the antithesis of that beacon of light and make him just something that will make the world kind of give up on resisting. Because usually in the comics, Captain America is the one that gives everybody that ability to want to keep going. But if he's evil in this account and they see that their shield and their hero is somebody that is here to just destroy them all, I guess he just wants people to give up and then make that a public spectacle. The thing that initially surprised me is that after Bloodstone 1 makes it a point to say that he's trying to turn everybody, you then start to see characters get attacked in very crazy ways. There are two versions of this book. When you go pick them up, there's a regular version that's safe for most audiences. And there is a red band version of the book that I have right here, where essentially all the gruesome, dark and, and, and overly violent art that you're gonna see in the book is gonna be in that version. Things like disemboweling, decapitation are gonna be shown there. And we definitely see something in this book that really messed me up. You see Thor get a spike of some sort thrown right between his eyes. Um, and it's it, like, it impales him in the head pretty bad. And from that point when I saw it, I was kind of surprised because, bro, you said you wanted to turn him into vampires. Why'd you just dome piece this dude? So you see Thor go down and get bodied. Uh, you got to Iron Man getting his suit like invaded almost immediately from his matchup. And Wanda and Ms. Marvel are also getting throttled as well. And you cut to Black Panther who's getting the literal mask beaten off of him. Um, and he has a smart moment where he's like, hey bro, they got it. We weren't ready for this, they blitzed us. We have to retreat. So he's then trying to force the computer that they have, which is some sort of Jarvis system to get them to retreat and teleport them out of there computer's not allowing it and then he has to i guess go past that into their emergency protocol and calls for captain america to be the first one taken out and this shows just how important that captain america is to bloodstorm and i'm very interested to see how important he is in future issues of this run for the factor of he is going nuts about trying to make sure that he gets captain america um so much so that he essentially is like hey black panther you fucking up you're done and just puts his hand through Buddy's chest or stomach. I can't remember like where exactly, but through his, his upper torso, hand goes completely through and he just disembowels Black Panther essentially. And again, after watching Black Panther get murdered and Thor get dome-pieced, um, I'm starting to understand that 
in order to be turned by these vampires and, and, and the way they do it, you don't have to be in full assembly, for lack of a better term. Because if you look at the cover art for the different future tie-ins that have been announced for Black Panther, Miles Morales, and Wolverine, uh, on the covers you see what looks to be a vampiric Black Panther and uh, Miles Morales being a vampire. So I'm assuming all these characters were turned at some point and I'm curious to see just how many more popular characters in Marvel are turned into vampires and are just threats going forward. As that fight ends and the Avengers are able to kind of escape with their lives, at least a few of them escape with their lives, you're then kind of moving through the world and you're shown that we are appearing at Doctor Strange's Sanctum Santorum in, in New York. And him and Clea are essentially like on the hunt through all the different spell books to create a pretty much vampire nuclear bomb, for lack of a better sense, almost like a, a bio spell that goes around and murders every vampire in existence. Um, and as they're trying to figure that out, you have Blade pop in, kind of check in on them, letting them know like, hey, came to see y'all and kind of give y'all an update on what's going on because shit be crazy outside. Um, he's letting them know that a order called the Structure are the ones behind everything that's going on. They're a secret vampire organization that, again, I think they were around in previous uh, comic runs. Um, Blade lets Doctor Strange know that initially they were just a regular run of the mill cult, vampire cult. Blade lets Doctor Strange know that in the past they were just a run of the mill vampire cult that weren't that crazy organized. But after Moon Knight killed their leader, somebody else stepped in someone more organized, somebody more dangerous and more cunning stepped in and started devising plans for things that are going on. And keep in mind, as Blade's giving this monologue, you're starting to kind of notice him act kind of funny. Because at this point, you're wondering, hey, why wasn't he there with the Avengers when he called everybody in? Why is he here kind of acting kind of funny, taking his shades off and looking around kind of shady like? And, and what I would assume talking in a very suspicious manner. Um, you then cut to Blade letting Doctor Strange know it's me, uh, but not just announcing it verbally. Again, if you have the red band edition and what I saw, you see him cut Doctor Strange clean in half with this katana. Like literally you see large and small intestines just spread apart as Blade cut him in half. In the regular edition, I think he just impales them. So I'm curious to see how, like, if that matters at all going forward in the story. But yeah, the big reveal at the end of this book, Blade is the villain of the story. I don't know if he's supposed to be like the big bad throughout the entire run of the, of the story, or if he's just possessed or somebody's just pretending to be him, like a, a shapeshifter of some sort. But this is rather interesting to me. And I think this makes the story a lot more interesting because you have a laundry list of other uh, heroes and villains that are a part of the story. Somebody like Dr. Doom is like an anti-hero in the story. He seems to be somebody that is going to be working alongside the heroes to fix all the stuff going on. But I think the bigger thing that makes me excited about this run is that Brielle Brooks, somebody I did a video on prior, um, who's Blade's biological daughter, she's going to have her own issue in uh, tie into the story. I, I think it may be a part of the main issue run of the story, which she's going to be navigating everything going on. I'm hoping this is a chance for them to prop up a lot of the characters that don't get a lot of attention. And the main focus to me should be on propping up Brielle and making her the key piece in fixing everything going on. If they do this in the right manner, I think this could be something that kicks off a lot of popularity with Brielle um, and her going forward and possibly future stuff, maybe the MCU at some point. They've already announced tie-ins for characters like Union Jack and Wolverine's getting a tie-in, X-23 is getting a tie-in for this, The Strange Academy is getting a tie-in for this. So a lot of characters that people may not be familiar with are going to be given a lot of uh, a lot of light in this in this Blood Hunt run. If you want to see me cover all the tie-ins for this, I would honestly be happy to. Just let me know in the comments below. I do plan on at bare minimum covering the main issue run for this as it drops uh, throughout the next couple months. But if you want to see me cover the tie-ins, let me know and I'll work on different ways to cover that and maybe try to get more in depth in it. This is kind of just to fill the the waters out to see just how much people really want to see me get into this run in particular, but I will be talking about the main issue run. So if you guys want to see a lot of my crazy perspective and how I analyze things again, comment down below, subscribe down below, 
and I'll see you guys next time. This has been your boy Captain Diesel, and this has been Captain Diesel's Dojo, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. You're now watching The Captain.